members of Parliament. Uh, with me in the studio tonight, Randy Wassano, a Liberal member of the Commons Justice Committee. Michael Cooper is the Justice Critic for the Official Opposition Conservatives and a Vice Chair of the Commons Justice Committee as well. And Tracy Ramsey is the Trade Critic for the NDP. She joins me from Essex, Ontario. Good to see you all. Thank Thanks you. for being here. Randy Wassano, let me start with you. There's some suggestion around Official Ottawa tonight that maybe the Prime Minister's prepared to move this conversation along in, a, in another tumultuous week here and perhaps uh, use, the, use, use some s sort of contrition to talk about maybe the actions of people in my office did go too far, change the narrative a bit, which has so far been uh, everything we did was appropriate, was the right thing to do, nothing was unlawful, and uh, we uh, did nothing wrong in my office or in the office of other government officials. What do you think of that? If that? Where do you think the Prime Minister should be going on this story now with the resignation of another Cabinet Minister this week? Well, I'm not going to speak for the Prime Minister. He can do that ably for himself. I will say that, you know, I was disappointed in Ms. Philpott's decision. She's a, a great colleague. I worked with her a lot on the uh, urban Indigenous file. Uh, it's very unfortunate. She brings a lot to our, our caucus and to, and to the team. And I'm focused on, on the Justice Committee. Our mission is to understand what happened here, mm -hmm. to get the facts out, to take the emotion out and see what happened. And so I'm very much focused on looking what will, at what will happen tomorrow in the Justice Committee. Does having a, 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 a who is still, both are still caucus colleagues at this point, but having another cabinet minister, and in this particular case, Jane Philpott saying she has lost confidence in her government to be able, mm -hmm. and the way they've handled this issue and the way they've dealt with the response to the issue. Does that complicate the work, your work on a justice committee, when at least some of your colleagues have made a decision already? They don't, they don't need to hear from Jerry Butts. Well, I think you know our system, Peter, and our system is when you serve as a minister of the Crown and, and you lose confidence, then it's incumbent on you to, to resign, which is what Ms. Philpott did. 33 other ministers have indicated their, their support and confidence, not only in the government, but in the Prime Minister. I want to hear from Jerry Butts, and I want to hear from the clerk again, and I want to hear from Natalie Dwayne again, and that's what we will do tomorrow. Mr. Cooper, how does the resignation of Jane Philpott uh, and looking ahead to the testimony of Mr. Butts tomorrow, how does that change things for you? Yeah, well, Jody wilson rabled last Last week blew the whistle on an unprecedented campaign directed by the Prime Minister to obstruct justice. And in light of the uh, significant evidence that she brought forward, the very disturbing evidence, it's clear that the Prime Minister has lost the moral authority to govern and needs to go. And yesterday, Jane Philpott, a senior member of his cabinet, not, not just any cabinet minister, but someone who I think uh, has widely respected as a competent minister, uh, indicated she doesn't have confidence in him either in light of the evidence of interference. So how, how does that, that change this story for you? Well, I think it underscores the fact that we have a prime minister who is running a government that is in chaos. They're unable to govern. They're unable to put past uh, this scandal. Uh, but as far as what happens tomorrow in terms of a testimony, I, I don't know that it impacts mm. anything because we have to wait and hear what Jerry Butts and uh, Michael Wernick say. Okay, Trace, Tracy Ramsey, what, what, uh, what's your reaction to the resignation of Jane Philpott and how do you think that changes the, the conversation around this story? Well, I think it was stunning to see her resignation, but certainly the letter was uh, very significant and very telling that she actually shares the same concerns that we heard from Jody Wilson-Raybould, uh, that she does not have confidence in this government. Having one minister say that is uh, quite significant and something that, uh, you know, is, is very, uh, I think, explosive. But having another minister follow shortly with the same exact reasoning uh, really leaves a lot of questions unanswered. And that is what Canadians are wondering today. Um, you you know, powerful people don't resign for no reason. Uh, clearly, Gerald Butts retire, uh, resigned for reasons that hopefully he'll reveal tomorrow. Um, and, you know, the question that everyone's wondering is, uh, will he be speaking about what happened after January 14th? Because uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould was only able to speak about a very uh, short period of time. She referenced it during her testimony several times that she wanted to be able to speak past that point, but that she wasn't able to. So, you know, there are a lot of unanswered questions. We still believe firmly in the NDP that we need a full inquiry, uh, and we believe that that will get down to the bottom of all of the questions that Canadians deserve an answer to at this point. Mr. Boston, can, will we be able to hear more from Gerald Butts tomorrow beyond? I mean, Jody Wilson-Raybould was restricted. Is he going to be restricted as well, or can he talk about conversations that happened uh, after she was uh, d demoted from, or after she was shuffled out of Attorney General and Justice and into Veterans Affairs? Well, my understanding is Mr. Butts is a private citizen, and I'm 
I'm sure that his counsel will advise him of what he's able to bring to us tomorrow. But it's important for us to hear from his story. He's a principal secretary to the prime minister, a member, senior member in the prime minister's office. And it's important for us to have, you know, that piece of the puzzle. We've heard from other witnesses in this uh, in this controversy. And it's important for us to hear from Jerry tomorrow. Is he going to bring, uh, what have you been told as a committee? Uh, what kind of evidence have you been told to expect? In, in his request to come before the committee, he said, I need a few days to gather evidence and I think my testimony would be important is is he got do we know if he's got emails and texts and other records because she had a very detailed testimony what, what do you know yeah. Mr. Cooper yeah well I, I have really no idea what Mr. Butts is going to say but in the face of the very credible and detailed testimony of Jody Wilson Raybould he does have a lot of explaining to do uh, after all uh, it was on December 5th that Jody Wilson Raybould met with Gerald Butts in which she said enough of the pressure and reiterated mm -hmm. in strong terms that she had made a decision. Gerald Butts uh, didn't accept that. He continued to pressure her. And then there was a very uh, concerning meeting on December 18th supported by contemporaneous text messages of Jody Wilson, Rabel's chief of staff, uh, that Jerry Butts uh, further put pressure on her and said, I don't care if there's going to be interference. And Katie Telford, the prime minister's chief of oh, there staff. Isn't a I think he said there isn't a decision here that doesn't involve doesn't interference. Doesn't involve interference. Mm -hmm. And okay. the prime minister's uh, chief of staff, Katie Telford, said, uh, we're done we're discussing done the legality. So uh, this is clearly uh, evidence that Gerald Butts and Katie Telford, and frankly, it speaks to this prime minister, have a fundamental disrespect for the rule of law. Uh, Tracy Ramsey, what do you think Gerald Butts needs to answer tomorrow? What are the key questions you think NDP members of the committee will be putting to him? Well, I think that he needs to answer uh, about the entire truth. I don't know what he'll reveal tomorrow. I don't know um, how much he's going to be able uh, or want to share, rather, uh, because, you know, Gerald Butts and the Prime Minister have been friends for a very long time, and he was uh, connected to the, the win in the McGuinty government down here in Ontario and then, you know, headed up to Ottawa to continue his work in the Liberal Party. Uh, this is someone very loyal to the Liberal Party, and, uh, you know, it would be quite stunning if he comes forward tomorrow and actually speaks the entire truth and admits that he was putting this pressure, you know, talks about the text messages that were sent. Um, the questions that the NDP will have, I'm sure, will focus around uh, what his intent was, what he meant by those particular messages, why he felt it necessary uh, to discuss this with uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould after the decision had already been taken, um, you know, about his respect of the uh, position that she held as Attorney General in our country. And, you know, this really cuts, I think, to the heart of our democracy. Uh, Canadians are worried that corporations are sitting in the PMO and uh, pulling all the strings and getting everything that they want. And this story is essentially uh, confirming their worst fears, that that is exactly what happened. And Gerald Butts played a key role in this. And tomorrow, uh, he needs to be transparent and honest with Canadians uh, about what exactly happened and his role. Okay. But uh, certainly, there's a, a question to be asked about his resignation. Okay. Um, you and know, and why he would resign and say, I did nothing wrong. And, yep. and what a normal... Yep. Okay, Mr. Mr. Boston, let me ask you straight up. You're, you're a Liberal caucus member. Do you want Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott in caucus now? Well, look, Miss Wilson-Raybould and Miss uh, Philpott have indicated clearly uh, that they are sitting as caucus members and their commitment to... But they to, don't have confidence in the Prime Minister or the government. That's what Jane Philpott said. As cabinet ministers, they can still sit as caucus members and that's, look, that's going to be a, a conversation that they can uh, continue to have with um, members of caucus well, and the Prime Minister, but we, I'm what, fine if they're both in caucus. That okay makes sense that. to me. Absolutely. Okay. Should SNC-Lavalin still be, because some Liberals are still talking about that, should SNC-Lavalin still be eligible for a deferred prosecution? Agreement. Well, look, our study isn't about that. Our study is about the nature of remediation agreements and what happened in this particular case. In my sense, that's an issue that's entirely in front of the Attorney General, and that's where it should stay. Right, but based on what you've heard, where there's been some testimony at the committee about Chalk Ross principle and those kind of, and remediation agreements. Should, should they still be eligible? Because Mr. Lametti is hinting that they still could be. Another MP has been saying in Ottawa in the last couple of days that, yeah, they're still eligible. They, they, they should be eligible for this. So how do you feel? I think that matters in front of the Attorney General. It's for it's his call to make. All right. Mr. Cooper, should SNC-Lavalin, given everything that's going on, should this company be eligible the, for a deferred prosecution agreement? The decision was made by the Director of Public Prosecutions. That they should not be. That, that there should not be. And the former Attorney General, upon the issuance of the notice from the DPP, reviewed the case, reviewed the facts, looked at the law, and made a very clear determination that there should not be. Uh, and what we have 
in the face of that is a prime minister who sought to subvert the law in the name of winning an election. Tracy Ramsey, uh, what's your view about whether this company should still be in, in, there should still be conversations around whether this company gets a deferred prosecution agreement? Well, I think it's become very clear to people that the Liberals aren't really concerned about uh, whether or not, uh, you know, them getting this agreement falls within the scope of the role of the Attorney General, whether it actually falls in the scope of the legislation. Um, by the comments that have been made recently by uh, Steve McKinnon, that have been made by uh, David Lametti, it's clear that they're going to find some type of way to put this through. Uh, they are not concerned about the law. This is what we saw coming out of these texts. This is what we heard from Jody Wilson-Raybould about the pressure. The decision had been made. The decision was made within the scope of the legislation, and the Liberals have disrespected that. Is okay. our Canadians thinking that they're going to suddenly turn around and respect that? They're certainly not indicating that, and their members who have been out speaking about it are actually creating a, a backstory and creating that story that uh, Katie Telford, I think, was trying to create, where there's a, a, a reason for them to disrespect the legislation and the decision that was taken okay. by the previous Attorney General. Right. We'll have to leave our conversation there. Uh, live committee coverage, of course, tomorrow here on CPAC, and uh, we'll see mm -hmm. both of you gentlemen there. And Tracy Ramsey, thanks for your time uh, this evening on this, and we'll talk again soon. Thank okay. you all. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. The Prime Minister cancelled a trip to